Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry we're going to discuss unit conversions again, um, but this time we're going to talk about something called the factor label method. Today's essential question, how is the factor label method used to convert between units? Today for the lecture you're going to need both a calculator and your unit conversion table. Okay, let's do this. Um, again, we'll start with a few terms. So we have something called a conversion factor, also known as an equality. And those, that, those are mathematical expressions that relate two different units that measure the same quantity. For example, if we were to measure the, the length of something, we could use a foot, we could use inches. And we could convert between the two using the equality or conversion factor, one foot equals 12 inches. So a conversion factor or equality allows you to convert measurements from one unit to another. A conversion factor or equality is a relationship between the units given, the known, and the units you are trying to find, the unknown. Okay, let's learn how to use conversion factors. So the steps for using conversion factors. Um, the example we, we, we will use while learning this is how many centimeters are there in 56 inches? Okay, the first thing you should do when doing these kind of problems is to rewrite the problem as a math problem. So for step one, we're going to write what we know, and we know we have 56 inches. And what are we trying to find out? What, when, in math, when you don't know something, your unknown is an x. So we're trying to find out what 56 inches is in centimeters. So there is what our math problem should look like. Okay, step two, we're going to set up a grid and write the given or the known over one. All right, so a grid, I call it a grid. Some people call it a t-chart. It doesn't really matter to me. I don't usually use the terminology t-chart because later in the year our grid doesn't look like a t-chart. All right, so we've written our grid and now we need to take our known which is 56 inches and we're going to put that over one. Okay, so far so good. Okay, on to step three. Step three says determine which equality or conversion factor matches the units given in the problem. Use your unit conversion table. Okay, before we go on to step three, let's talk about how to use your unit conversion table. So if you could get that handy. Today we're not using the, the metric conversion, we're using the bottom portion, I think it's the bottom two thirds, the unit conversion area. Okay, let's just talk really quickly about how to use this. So anything that's in the same row is equal to each other. So for example, it's true that three feet equal one yard. Okay, it's tr true statement, that's a good equality or conversion factor. It's also a true statement that one yard equals 36 inches. Okay. Um, we could also say that three feet equals 36 inches. Those are all true statements. What I could not say, which would not be true, it's not true that 12 inches equals 3 feet. Untrue. Okay, they are not in the same line. All right? Okay, now, let's see. Let's, let's do step three. Okay, so again, step three says we need to determine which equality or conversion factor matches the units given in the problem. That's the one we're going to use. So I wrote step one, which is our math problem down below, and we have the units, inches, and centimeters. So we're going to look through our unit conversion table, and I actually just put on the page the right one to look at, but you might have to search a little bit more. Um, and I see two different equalities that have the units, centimeters, and inches. I have one centimeter equals 0 0.39370 inches, and one inch equals... 2.54 centimeters. Now the truth is we could use either one and get the right answer. Okay, I'm gonna pick the bottom one just because. Alright, so we're on to step four which is to put the conversion factor into the grid setting it up so all units cancel out and then solve. So let me jot down that conversion factor from step three that we picked and we picked one inch equals 
2.54 centimeters. All right, so what we need to do now is we need to take these, this number and unit and this number and unit, and it needs to go into these two places. Um, and we pick which one should go where based on the ability to cross out the units. Um, so if you remember, you can cross out top to bottom. So since we have inches in the top here, I'm going to put inches at the bottom. So I'm going to have one inch at the bottom and 2.54 centimeters on the top. Okay, now the, in the inches cross out and we're left with the unit centimeters, which is what we wanted. All right, so now the way, this, the way to read this table is you multiply the things across the top, this is multiplication, and across the bottom, and then you divide. So we have, if you guys could put this in your calculator, 56 times 2.54, and I got 142.24 centimeters, and then if I multiply the bottom, 1 times 1 is 1. Okay, so we can kind of ignore the 1, which gives us an answer now of 142.24 centimeters. Okay, let's try another pra practice problem together. So our example, how many liters are there in 4,598 pints? All right, so the first thing we do is rewrite this as a math problem. So our known is 4,598 pints and we're trying to find out what that is in liters. Okay. Step two, write the grid and put our known in the grid. And again, we know 4,598 pints over one. All right, now we need to find an equality that has pints and liters in it. So let's look back at the unit conversion table and see if we can find anything that has pints and liters in it. Okay, in the first row I see liters but no pints. In the second row I see pints and liters right here. Okay. So we need to put one of those, we need to put those two numbers in our conversion table. One on the top, one on the bottom. So, what do you think? Who should go on the bottom? And why do you think it should go on the bottom? I say eight pints on the bottom because it can cross out with the, eight, with the pints on the top. So on the top goes 3.7854 liters. Okay, let me get rid of that stuff on the bottom so we have more room. Okay, so now remember what we're going to do is we're going to multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom. So if you guys could do that with me so we can see if we all agree on the answer. All right, now I got a number with a ton of digits. I got a 1740.5. Liters. I forgot to do something. We should sh see that the pints do cancel out. Over 1 times 8 is 8. Okay? So from there, we're going to divide. When you're dividing, something looks like a fraction. Which number goes in the calculator first? The top one. So then I get, I end up with 2, 1, 7, 5, point, six five eight six five liters. It's now time to check your understanding. So I would like you to do each of these problems to the best of your ability and by yourself. So hit, hit pause and do it when you think you're ready. Hit play. We'll go over it together. Um, and if you could please once again do your answers in both standard and scientific notation. All right, number one. First thing I'm going to do is rewrite this as a math problem. 2598 pounds equals x grams. Then I am going to write my grid. And in the grid, I'm going to put my known, which is 2598 
pounds over 1. And now I need to find an equality. Um, the, I found the equality on the conversion factor table. I found it on, in the mass section. And there are two that you can use. I ended up picking the one on the, bottom, uh, the top row. So 1,000 grams equals 2.2 pounds. Now these, these two numbers need to go into my conversion table, um, and I pick which one goes on the bottom by whatever's on the top for the given. So 2.2 pounds on the bottom, so the top is going to have 1,000 grams. Okay, to make sure I did this right, I'm going to double check my units cross out. So now I need to, I'm going to multiply across the top and across the bottom. And that gives me a big old long number, 2598000 grams over 2.2. .2. So now I'm going to divide. And I got 1180909. Zero nine one grams. Now let's try number two. Okay, step one. Rewrite this as a math problem, which is thirty-two days equals x minutes. Okay, and then step two. Write a grid and put our known in the grid, which in this case is 32 days, over what? And now I need to look at the unit conversion table, figure out which equality I'm going to use. Okay, and I pick to use 365 days equals 5256. Zero, zero minutes. Okay. Now these two numbers need to go into our grid and I'm going to put 365 days at the bottom so that days crosses out with days. And the top is going to be 525600 minutes. And I'm now going to get rid of this stuff, get it out of my way. All right, so I'm going to multiply across the top and across the bottom. And when I do that, I get a big old long number. You get 1681920 minutes and 365. And from here I divide, and I got 46080 minutes. Number three. Okay, let's write our math problem. I've got 1849.00 feet equals x miles. Step two. I write the grid and put in my known, which is 1849.00 feet over 1. Okay. Next, I look for an equality that has both feet and miles in it. And I found 1 mile equals 52.80 feet. Okay, when I put these two numbers in the grid, I'm going to put the 52.80 feet on the bottom because I need the feet to cancel out and one mile goes on the top. Get rid of this. All right, next I'm going to multiply across the top and across the bottom so I end up with 184900 mile divided by 5280. Okay. When I divide, I get a number with lots of digits 
three nine three nine mile.